My name is Felix Hoes. I'm a respiratory physician working in Heidelberg, Germany, in Europe at the end. And uh, we have a huge severe asthma program running in uh, Europe. So, so therefore, I have a little bit of understanding about the issue. To be honest, uh, in Europe and also in the US, it already changed. So we published uh, several randomized control trials in the past in high-ranked journals showing that there is enough evidence to use the thermoplasty in well-selected uh, severe asthma patients. And we were able to show that we can improve the quality of life, we can reduce the exacerbation numbers of those patients treated with thermoplasty. So therefore, in the US, the FDA, and also in Europe, the EMEA approved the technology the debate is a little bit the cost of the procedures. You have to go through three bronchoscopies, you need three catheters, and you have to pay for the catheters. So therefore, the evidence is there. It's a little bit more the money who is the issue where we have to work on. I think the comorbidities in severe asthma, they are similar wherever you are in the world. There's it's obesity, there is also rhinitis, and uh, also we have a lot of asthma patients smoking a little bit. So also COPD can be a comorbidity which is occurring in those asthma patients. So at the end of the day for all treating physicians, they really have to look to the different comorbidities to really have in focus what is asthma related regarding the symptoms and what is comorbidity related regarding the symptoms the patient is complaining of. So we have nowadays a better understanding about the different phenotypes of asthma. So we have an eosinophilic phenotype, you can measure in the, by the blood eosinophils. And we also have an elevated EGE subtype. And those patients we can treat with biological, even the omalizumab here for the elevated IgE patients or for all the new IL-5 antibodies we have at least in Europe already on the market and we really can improve quality of life of those patients when we phenotyping them, when we characterizing them correctly. So for a small bunch of severe asthma patients, we have biological and they really help those patients. I think the, the, the most important point is to figure out if the patient is really suffering on severe asthma because some patients are not adherent to the inhalers and complaining of symptoms. This is not a severe asthma patient. This is a patient who is not adherent to the therapy. Some patients have vocal cord dysfunction, mimicking uh, severe asthma. So for you as treating physician, it's the hardest job to figure out if the patient really suffers on severe asthma. For those, when you figured out this is a patient, then you have to do the phenotyping and then you can do the phenotype-specific therapy. But the issue is if the patient is really severe. The future of, uh, for all of our patients will be that we're getting more and more insight in the molecular changing, in the pathways of the different phenotypes. And then the industry will provide us with more and more biologicals. So in the future, the f we will have a bunch of uh, biological for really well-specified patients so we can treat the patient in a better way. The back side of the coin is that will be very expensive for our health system. So the question is who is able to pay for all those expensive therapies, but this is something we have to work all as on as a community. Mm -hmm.